To every thing there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Hi, this is Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting, and you're listening to Quick Hits, a podcast about all things national security related. That line that I read, of course, is from the Old Testament. It's from Ecclesiastes. It is quite well known, I'm I'm pretty sure. It was turned into a song, I believe, by, was it the birds? Anyway, some group from the 60s. I, I should know having been born in the 60s, but it slips my mind right now. And the reason why I chose to lead off with this verse today is not that I'm particularly religious. In fact, I'm not. And as somebody who works uh, worked in counterterrorism, more specifically Islamist extremism, for more than 20 years, I know the evil purposes to which terrors, or to which religion rather is used, so I have a rather jaundiced view of religion these days. But the reason why I wanted to introduce it with that is that um, I'm going to announce a change to the way I'm doing things here at Borealis, more specifically with respect to the podcasts. The other day, I was sitting on my veranda, having a beer with an old friend of mine, with whom I used to work at, at CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. We were chatting away on, you know, various things, uh, people we used to know, yada, yada, yada. He's retired as well. So it's just two old retired guys sitting on the porch having a beer. And he asked me, he says, you know, I, I really like your podcast a lot. I think it's really informative. It's it's fun to listen to. It's done well. But have you ever thought about expanding into elements or issues that aren't solely terrorist in nature? And, and that's given me some thought. It's made me wonder whether or not as somebody who worked in security intelligence for 32 years, only half of which was spent in counterterrorism, the other half was on completely different matters, most of which I can't get into for reasons I'm sure you understand, maybe it is time for a change. Because there are other issues out there that one could label or describe in general as national security and or public safety related. By the way, a bit of a side note, national security and public safety are two very different things. They are conflated a lot. You might want to search my website. I had a, a blog on that uh, quite some time ago, a few years ago, on the difference between national security and public safety. Sometimes they're the same, most often they're not. And that maybe I could reflect on issues that go beyond terrorism. This is not to say I'm going to abandon terrorism uh, for a couple of reasons. A, it's what I know best. I have, in fact, written five and nine tenths of books on it. Spoiler alert, book six is coming out soon, I hope. It is something which is not going away. Terrorism still exists in dozens, if not hundreds of countries around the world. And while it does not pose an existential threat anywhere, with the possible exception of Afghanistan, as I've discussed in the past, it is still an important issue. And people do worry about it, and they do talk about it. And I like to think that I have something to say on terrorism based on my experience. But there definitely are other issues out there that are related to national security and public safety. When I used to work at CSIS, there were three sort of large divisions from an operational standpoint. There was a counterterrorism branch, which not surprisingly got, for the most part, the, the lion's share of the resources, especially after 9-11. But there was also a counterintelligence branch looking at foreign actors on Canadian soil, seeking to gain access to Canadian secrets and or influence Canadians, i.e. spy in Canada. And then there was what we call the counter-proliferation branch, or CP. And that looked at, not surprisingly, nuclear issues, uh, whether or not states were trying to acquire dual-use technology, et cetera, et cetera, to bolster their own nuclear weapons programs, such as North Korea, Iran, you you know, the usual cast of characters. So I've decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the nature of the podcast, which up till now has been called an intelligent look at terrorism, which I thought was rather clever, by the way. It was a look at terrorism, and by putting the word an intelligent look at the beginning, I was cheekily suggesting that I would look at terrorism from the intelligence perspective and not the academic one. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm not an academic, but I am definitely an intelligence veteran, more than three decades, as I've already said. It's time to look at more issues than that. So I'm going to change the name of the podcast and I'm going to change the focus. You got to stick around to the end to hear the new name of the podcast. It's pretty cheeky. 
But before I do that, I want to promise my listeners one thing. You've heard me rail against this a lot in the past, and that is the overuse, abuse, misuse of the word expert and expertise. Everybody and his uncle seems to be an expert these days. And I must admit, journalists are amongst the worst at this practice. They take anyone's word at expertise and call them an expert. Everyone's a national security expert. When I read those words in a news story, my first reaction is, who the hell made that person an expert? Where's the evidence that person is an expert? You've also heard me say that I will never refer to myself as an expert. The term has been so badly employed that it means nothing. As I've said before, when everybody's an expert, no one is. I therefore promise you two things. One is that I will not ever refer to myself as an expert. And I tell media that. I said, don't call me an expert. Call me an ex-thesis guy. Call me a terrorism specialist. Do not please call me an expert. The second thing is... I don't have an extensive background in counterintelligence or counterproliferation or other aspects of national security. And I'm the first person to admit that. I worked along alongside some very talented people at both CSIS and at CSE or Communication Security Establishment, Canada Signals Intelligence Agency, who have leagues more knowledge than I do on, on CI and CP. I'm not gonna pretend to have that knowledge, but I, what I will promise you is that I will search high and low for some very talented, knowledgeable knowledgeable people who have specialized in those fields, and I will bring them onto the podcast, and I'll have a conversation with them. But I myself will not try try to fool you, pull the wool over your eyes by claiming expertise in areas that I do not have any in. I'm looking forward to this change. Uh, (laughs) The other night, my wife and I were listening to a a webinar by, of all people, Chris Hadfield. Now, if you're not Canadian, the, the, the name Chris Hadfield may not mean a lot to you. He, of course, is a Canadian astronaut. He did three tours on the International Space Station, and he's probably best known for his rendition of David Bowie's Space Oddity, which he recorded on the space station. And if you haven't seen it, YouTube it. It's really, really good. And while you're at it, YouTube Chris Hadfield's duet with uh, Ed Robertson of the Bare Naked Ladies, great Canadian band, with a backup chorus by, a, I guess, a Toronto-based uh, choir, where they do another great song. Again, Chris is in space playing the guitar, and Ed Robertson's in a studio in Toronto. Brilliant, brilliant uh, music video. And he said something that I really found interesting. He said, only insects, actually, he said, only ants specialize. Uh, and I, that made me think. I'm not quite sure what he means by it. I guess, you know, insects have a very limited mental, if you can even call it that, capacity. They can only do so many things, so they do they do one thing and do it well. So I said to myself, I'm not going to be an insect. I'm not going to be an ant. I'm going to broaden the scope of what I talk about. I'm going to broaden the scope of individuals that I bring into the podcast to weigh in on these important issues of national security and public safety. And I really hope you enjoy this change in the podcast. There'll still be lots of terrorism, don't worry. If you haven't noticed, there's an actual schedule to what I publish on the website, borealisthreatrisk.com. Every day you get Today in Terrorism, and I can tell you that series is not going away either because there's far too much terrorism to talk about in history. You'll notice that these quick hit podcasts like this one are also being aired uh, every second day. And on the days in between, you are getting what are called perspectives, which are longer blogs on matters concerning national security. Up to now, mostly terrorism, that's gonna change. And then once a week, you get the longer podcasts, which up to now have been called an intelligent look at terrorism. And then on Sundays, it's just the today in terrorism. I take the day off in terms of everything else. What then is going to be the name for this new podcast? It may be not so new, but a podcast with a greater scope, let's put it that way. Well, I know you're sitting on the edge of your seats. You're wondering what I've chosen. Just like to let you know that I did canvas all my friends and, and family on, on Facebook and got dozens and dozens of suggestions, most of which were quite clever. They were all very good, and I, and I thank them all for doing that. And yet the winner of the new name for the podcast comes from a family member, from my sister-in-law, uh, Mary Holmes, who lives in British Columbia, White Rock, BC, right down near the U.S. border. And, wait for it, 
the, the new name for the podcast, the longer podcast about national security and public safety is Canadian Intelligence, eh? Or CIA for short. What do you think? Well, let me know. You won't hear that term being used for a little bit now. I still have four or five podcasts that have been recorded in the old Intelligent Look at Terrorism series. And you'll, you'll get have to get through those first. I think I'm booked up to mid-December already. So just before Christmas, it'll be your early Christmas gift from Borealis Threat Risk Consulting. And from me personally, a brand new podcast on all things national security and public safety concerned called Canadian Intelligence. Hey, eh? Anyhow, that's what I think. Drop me a line. What do you think of the name? Is it stupid? Is it fun? Does it get at what I'm trying to offer to my audience? Drop me a line. You can reach me on email, borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at borealisaves. You can also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like the content and want to hear more, simply go to my website, borealisthreatenrisk.com, find the subscribe button, provide your email address. You'll get a daily digest free of charge to your inbox every morning. It'll be your alarm clock on national security every day. Love to hear what you think. Not just about the name of my new podcast, but perhaps ideas for other ones. Love to hear from you. We'll talk again soon. Until then, stay safe.